Hi everyone. I have a very long and hard story to tell you. Last week, if not, I think over the weekend, I threw out the question, you know, what kind of topics should I talk about for my next Chai Tuesday video. And one of my dearest friends gave me a couple of um, ideas. And she, the second idea she gave me was, why don't you do a video on how drugs has personally touched you and affected you in your life? So, I have decided to tell you this story. Now, up front, I'm going to tell you this. This will involve more swearing, if I don't remember how, what word I want to use, gaps, because I don't remember a lot, and what I do remember scares the hell out of me, and drug talk. <laughs> okay? I'm not saying names. This is part of my life that I'm still dealing with. Memories, everything. Okay? So. I'm trying to make this. I don't want to make this too long or too. Because I've already cut a couple times already. I've done a couple of videos that I just. I didn't like, so I chucked them. And normally I would do this on my cell phone, but today I'm using my um, webcam. So anyway, okay, here we go, and I'm going to tell you this. I will tell you what I used to do. Am I ashamed? Yes. Did anyone make me do it? No. Was it my decision? Yes, it was. Okay. Here we go. May 23rd, 2012, I believe it was. We were sitting, when I was married, we were sitting at our apartment. I was watching movie, we were eating pizza, and it was chilling out. And we were having a lot of traffic coming in and out. And then also we hear someone over Bullhorn. This is upset. We have a warrant. We have a warrant. And I'm like, what the hell? My, I looked at my ex. Like, is someone kidding us? Is that us? You know, someone. We thought someone was screwing around. So anyway, um, like maybe a second or so later, a door got kicked in and um we we're all told to hit the floor I hit the floor oh baby did I hit that floor and I had we all had guns pointed at us people scream at us you know and I was freaking out we were all you know freaking out and Now I knew what was going on, while we were being, uh, where we were, or where we were. <sighs> I was involved, and I had knowledge of having meth being sold, made, and taken at my residence. And I also bought this if I used in making this disgusting shit. Okay. And we were all being held, hauled out in handcuffs and my mom's and my sister just, just and I'm stuttering out, so forgive me. Just freaking out, screaming, 
I'm crying, she's crying, you know, emotional stuff. You know, I'm apologizing to my neighbors, I'm like, I'm so, so, so sorry, you know. And, like, just, and this one neighbor's like, it's alright, you're okay, it's, it's not your fault. But in the back of my mind, I was like, yeah, it is, you know. And I, like I said, I knew what was happening. Was I scared? Oh, you bet. One of the scariest things in my life. I was handcuffed and put back in the police vehicle and brought to the police station <laughs> along with my ex and we were being yelled and screamed at and all sorts of things. <laughs> brought to jail in Marquette fingerprinted photographed and we were put in separate observation cells that were are, are called bubbles because basically it's a bubble and no privacy you could see everyone could see you you could see everyone and all you had was one wall one wall bubble wall co concrete bench type thing toilet sink and the door okay and a itchy itchy blanket and I was there for like maybe two and a half days maybe three I, I can't really remember too too much I'm sure I'm leaving a lot of stuff out, but like I said, my other videos are just too, too long, and I just, I couldn't. So, anyway, first day there, full day, I was brought into another room and placed in front of a video camera for arraignment type thing. And... I was really respectful. I said I answered the questions, yes sure, no sure, you know. And yeah. I was in there for like I said two two and a half, three days, something like that. And I was able to speak to a mental health um professional and they in turn looked at my wrist which thank goodness for uh, one of the guards that noticed I had taken, taken my nails and pressed them right where my veins are and I was going like this or actually you go down and it's sick that I know this so just I was pressed them in because I just I didn't I did not want to be like who does you know, so he, the mental health professional said, okay, just go ahead and move her to a cell block with other women so she's not alone. So they did that. I was brought into a private room. I was strip searched. Now, mind you, I hadn't showered in these two days. I hadn't brushed my teeth. I was even more embarrassed when I had to be strip searched. You know, no one wants to be in this situation. Um, I was happy as a clam that I could at least shower and brush my teeth. You know, embarrassed? Yes. Did I blame anyone? I did. Myself. There for a while, I did blame my ex, but like I said, no one made me do anything I did not want to do. Okay. I did pills. I will admit it. I'm not hiding that fact. Those are the only things I... Well. Oh, ganja too. But I ain't gonna hurt no one. And that was few and far between. 
So anyway. Whew. Um, I was brought up to a um cell block, and at the time there was in this cell block there's like three cells, and so and each cell had a single bed, metal bed with like this much of a padding, like the kind you would get in kindergarten mat you know type of thing so I ended up sleeping with some you know someone else in a day room in like a boat on top of that thin cover with thin sheets I didn't have my glasses thank god they started giving me my medications and yeah so I had people to talk to um and it, it kinda helped a little I mean, like I said, I did not. It's not the Ritz. No. No, 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 no. No privacy. If you have to poop, you have to poop. You got pee, you got pee. You know. Shower, you're lucky you had a... Um... Shower curtain. So... Anyway... Um, I was moved after a few weeks or a couple of weeks or something. I was moved from that cell block to another cell block where I had my own cell. And honestly, what are you going to do in jail? Behind TV bars. <laughs> Behind bars, you go watch TV and then use the phone. Or you can write letters. Um, read a books, you know, just do stuff to keep your mind off it. You could go to a group, church, you know. But, yeah, every, it's, when, and even when I first got out, I got out this, this early, like, 6 a.m., like, 5, 5.30 a.m., they turn the lights on, 6 a.m., it's breakfast type of thing, and, So anyway, I had, and the, one of the other worst parts was visiting the same behind a glass booth, um, talking on the phone, seeing your mom or your dad or your sister. I'm not going to cry. I can't. I'm done. And knowing that you can't. Hug them, kiss them, anything. It just makes everything way worse. <laughs> you know? So, anyway, I was in there for 30, 31 days. And 30, and the last time I was there, I was released on my, on ROR, my own recognizance. And I was placed on probation. A year's probation plus fines. And I love my mom, which honestly, it's fine. I love my mom. You know, we've always had our differences, but we we were always able to laugh and have fun and just communicate. And I can't hide anything my, from my mom. Never could. So, anyway, I lived with my mom for a couple of years until I got my own place and... I was still on probation for like a year, alright, and I was as honest and as I could with my probation officer, I did everything that she told me to do, I made a payment deal for my fines, I did community service, which honestly was pretty cool, because I did get to meet a lot of new people, but it wasn't the way I... Yeah. And I paid off all my fines. I went to counseling. Which, honestly, I'm still in counseling to deal with a lot more issues. <laughs> but, anyway. I finished up probation. Paid off all my fines. Obviously, I'm staying in all the trouble. And I'm leaving a lot of this... Of 
in this video out just for certain reasons and I'm not saying any names for safety reasons and if you're gonna hate on me hate on me I don't care but just please don't put it in the comments I just I can't all right if you want to ask questions okay PM me Instagram Twitter actually can you all the social medias snapchat Facebook um leave questions on there um Twitter and I will answer them the best I can just you have to bear with me alright now the reason I told you a story is and it's long winded but it's not as long as it was it's because I've been hiding this fact for a really long time and honestly I kind of short shortened the story a lot and left a lot out. So anyway, yeah. <laughs> Excuse me. <laughs> and I might do another video later. I'm not 100% sure on more, but anyway. If you want more of the story or <laughs> I might just move on to the dating part of the a aspect of my life, which will be fun. I'm sure of it. Anyway, along this road, I met a lot of people and found out who were people I could always trust, who cared about me, and I cared about them, and I consider them family, are always there. They stayed there. You know, they're like, okay, hey, how you doing? You know, I mean, I see them every day. But just the fact that I know they're there and I can talk to them, reach out, and they reach out to me, you know, makes you feel good. <sighs> like I said, it's a long video. I was able to stop myself from crying a lot. So anyway, like I said, if you have any questions, leave them in the comments below, or hit me up on all my social medias, uh, Facebook, Twitter, Tumblr, Instagram, Google+, and Snapchat, and obviously here, and please, no negativity, none, please, I've had it, I've like literally had it up to here with it, and I'm throwing it out, if you are going to be hateful and negative, I'm not going to answer. I will delete and I will ignore you. But if you have a generally um, general question that you want answered, go ahead and leave them below and I will answer them. And thank you so much for watching and I'm sorry this is so long and wordy. And like I said, I left a lot out and I did not name names. But that was just for my reasons. And honestly, if you throw this out here too. If you know anyone that is struggling with any type of um, addiction. Whether it be addiction to food, gambling, sex, um, drugs, alcohol. help them even if they don't ask for it verbal verbally 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 they need help and sometimes it takes them a while to actually even say anything but if you've known them for a while and you're like oh this isn't you and you pro them and you're like okay what's up and they don't say anything they don't come they use you you know they're not themselves just be like hey if you need help if you want to talk I'm here and there's a whole bunch of um
education that they and you yourself can receive online and out in the world. But let them know they're not alone. And even if they push you away, just be like, alright, if you want help, let me know. And I'll do my best. Just let them know that you're there. Okay? Before it's too late. Before they either end up in jail or prison or in a grave. I've seen a lot of people go out like that. No. So anyway, yeah. Sorry this was such a long video. It was like 20 some minutes. But anyway, I love you guys so much. And yeah. And if you, since you're here and you say this long, if you want to be part of the Grumpy Pugamo crew, hit that subscribe button. I put out, as of right now, I put out new videos every Tuesday. And yeah. Thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. Sorry this is so long and I skipped over a lot of parts. <laughs> but yeah. I love you guys. Thank you so much.